Hey guys, welcome to the exercise. Um, today we're going to do some some game design, and um, you know that's what we're going to do today. And I'm glad that you're joining me. Hey, I think I'm going to move this party over to YouTube permanently. Um, Twitch is cool, but um, I think YouTube is is better for for the kind of streams that I do. So we'll see. Without further ado, let's get let's get this party started. Welcome to the Exosynic Show. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Yeah, guys so that's my album let's go straight into doing some art today all right yeah that that's that's the album that i'm trying to make <laughs> we're just a bunch of rap beats yeah so this is exercise in the show. and um we're gonna totally get into um doing some some art in blender all right that's what it's all about right now so i'm glad you joined me today and for all those out there, um, 
and Twitch who have been following me. I'm gonna try to move this party over to YouTube. Um, I'm also on Discord. So, you know, so that should be pretty interesting. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, dokes, let's go. All right, here we are in Blender. What have I been up to? I've been up to trying to update that one level for the game Soul 3000 that I'm working on. To um, keep being inspired to produce a game and all and everything like that is, you know, it's a challenging thing to stay active as a one man developer. And, um, you know, wrapping my head around programming and everything like that is pretty, you know, it's pretty interesting. So. I don't know what, um, I'm trying to get Twitch to display this thing. I'm, I'm not sure what Twitch is doing. Not Twitch, um, my, my bad. I mean, I'm not sure what Discord is doing. Okay. Okay, Discord. <laughs> Gonna try it one more time here. Yeah, it keeps switching off my my monitor. I'm not sure what it's doing. Okay, it says my stream still is running. Okay. All right, so yeah, anyway, here we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to flatten the, um, the terrain that I have. It's gotta turn this music down just a smidgen so I could hear. Right, so yeah, so this here is um is the level for level one, and in the game it looks you know it looks a lot more sophisticated. So I'm going through and I'm flattening the areas where I have these buildings that the character has to interact with. Actually, let's check this building here. It looks a little odd. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, I'm flattening this area here. So I'm gonna turn my screencast keys on. So that, you know, if you guys um, know about Blender or follow Blender, you'll see that my keys pop up here. So let me, let's turn that on. Okay, screencast keys, here we go. Okay, there's my screencast keys. Let me adjust that so you guys can see it a lot clearer than that tiny thing there. Okay, that's the font size. Margin is about that. And then um, line thickness is a little bit. And then I'm gonna make the mouse a little bit bigger. Now my question is, can you see that? I think you can. Okay, so these are, this is what I'm using here. I think I'm gonna use another color other than white. I'm gonna go back to, um, I have a yellow happening. Which I believe may be a lot more visible. Okay, here we go. Okay, save this. 
Okay, guys. Just saving here. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten this area. So I have to modify the terrain to allow for the buildings to exist. Because, I mean, a building, technically, you could stick it into a mountain like this. You'll have to cut into the mountain, and you gotta show all of that kind of stuff, you know? So, I'm just gonna try to make it look as, um, um, as reasonable as possible if, like, somebody really did construct it that way. So, I'm actually gonna try to bring up the terrain up to the level of this platform right here. So, let's try that. And, by the way, all these things are textured, so let's... I'm just gonna turn my textures on so we could take a look to see what um what the textures uh, what's happening with the textures here. Okay, it's taking a little while. It's loading up. Okay, here we go. This is Blender's uh, texture. Actually, let's see what that. Last part here that I flattened, what that looked like here. Yeah. You see how um, they're stretching right here from the thing? I don't mind that too much, as long as it's not too visible. And anything that's kind of weird, you could, we could go in and we could, we could fix that. All right? I could go in and fix that. So, but for now, let's, let's try here. I'm going to go back on to my quick shade mode. I'm going to lay down, um, lay down some temporary... Uh, terrain things here. Let's turn that on. Yeah, so this is what I use to flatten the areas. So I'm going to do that over here. I'm just going to add a, a new plane. Actually, um, click on my temp, make sure that's current. And we're going to see how fast we could we could do all of this stuff, guys. And I say, when I say we, I mean like I am going to. So let's do this. Okay, so the music you're hearing, you could um, actually check out on um, SoundCloud. I have a SoundCloud. Eh, you know, check it out. Hit me a like, hit me a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I try to keep the music simple and not, I'm not trying to be like the next big hip hop producer. I'm just doing stuff that's kind of lighthearted and it's a little happy, you know. And the world has way too much serious demonic music out there already. <laughs> All right, let's go. Need to keep it clean. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna go into to local mode here with the. Yeah, so let's go here. And let's go up to about here. So. All right, so I'm gonna do several things. I'm gonna. Turn the um, the draw mode of this uh, of this plane, this polygon that I'm making here, into something a little bit clearer to see. So if I go here in, in Blender and visit under visibility, actually display viewport display. Um, I said texture. I want it to be a wireframe, and I want it to be in front. So it's in front at all times. You could kind of faintly see it. See what it's doing. So. It's, um, so I'm going to turn off the terrain for a minute here. Should have that in a separate layer here. I'm going to export um, terrain low. All right, here we go. You can see. I'm going to go up to like about there. And I'm going to extrude this part here up to here real quick. Give it a little space, tight space there. Okay, let's go. Let's go in and see um, what the terrain is doing here. Mm -hmm. We better extrude that. Let's do it like this. Let's go up to here. So. I know this one's supposed to go like up to about here. 
Okay, so everything's gotta be flat, more or less along these lines. And the rest, let's go E. The rest of the tree has got to kind of ramp up to it. So let's just start moving um, points around. Um, I'm gonna switch tools here. Oh. Yeah, let's do it like that. I don't need the tool with the widget on there. Let's just do this like this. Again, you want a smooth trans. I want a smooth transition up to where this stuff is, and it's mostly along the riverbank. Kind of needs that. Let's do something like this. Let's not do that. Let's do this along here. Okay. Smooth the river. Split that, let's bring another point in here. Split that. So, control R is the loop cut in Blender. Okay, before we do too much, maybe I did too much loop cutting there. I want to make sure that these things are on the the level that it's supposed to be on. So, control and so grab Z, so you grab and snap, so snap. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna turn off that in front so we can kind of see if it's actually snapping through. And I'm gonna um, turn it from wireframe back to textured so we can see the where the points okay. let's check this point here yeah because the ground might be slightly uneven So I want to transition from here to here because the ground is going to dip. So I'm just going to do something like that. And this here, definitely want that on point width. Let's turn that terrain off. That's a terrain. So yeah, I want it to be definitely flat around here. I'm going to just do a cut here to help myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've seen what, what's happening. You see the terrain is kind of diving down. Yeah. Slightly uneven. Just slide that over here. Let's turn the terrain back on. Okay. Then nothing snap to. Okay. I'm just to change my snap here real quick to um, face. Okay. So I'm trying to change the topology going into. Flat parts here of the um, let's turn the two on, let's turn face and vertices. You could do that in Blender. It does hey snap faces and vertices. Okay, so it's going into there. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this point here and it's gonna bring it down slightly so it's a little more of a transition. Okay, so I think that's kind of cool for now there. Actually, let's go to the top view. Let's bring in front on again. Okay. 
I think I do want that like that. I'm gonna leave that. So let me see. Let's go to the top. Just gonna round that out some. Yeah, so it's a natural flow kind of like that. Okay, let's deal with this part here. So what, what I'm doing, I'm making kind of like a temporary mesh that will help me conform the terrain I already sculpted to a slope angle that's going to add lead up to this new geometry that I'm trying to add in. Let's turn the terrain off. I need to see. Let's turn this in front off again. Okay, so it's intersecting here, here, and here. And I believe this should be okay, though. Let's look at that slope. So this is where I like to judge like how smooth because you know I wanted I don't want too sharp of a ramp on there because the character's gotta it's gotta reach up to that. I'm gonna bring this guy over here like so. I'm gonna bring him down a little bit like so so it transitions a little bit into that. I'm gonna bring this guy over here. Let's see if there's like anything like that here. Do that. Bring these guys over here, like so. Okay, I'm watching. This could technically go up a bit. So that looks somewhat like a smooth slope. Okay, so let's bring back in on the terrain. Let's take a look. Okay, so the terrain is going to slope up that way. Let's bring this out a bit. And bring this in a bit. Okay, guys, let's, let's give this thing a shot. I have two terrain pieces, this piece here and this piece over here to be affected by this right here. So save this. Okay. I'm gonna turn this back to a wireframe. Oh, saving. Okay. Turn this back to a wireframe. Let's keep it like so. Let's get out of edit mode on this. Save. And I'm gonna try to get it to stick to, to that thing there. Okay, let's see. <laughs> All right, so let's select that guy. I want to drop a modifier on it, a shrink wrap modifier. Shrink wrap, and I want it to project on the Z negative and positive right here. And um, let's see here. Let's clip all these off. Uh, so the target object, I, I want to name this thing here. So I'm going to call this um, flatten2. Okay, so the target is to flatten to. Okay, and the part that I want is the path. Okay, so that should take care of the path leading up to there. I thought I made this wireframe. Let's go back. Let's go texture, let's go wire. Okay, here we go. So yeah, so I could kind of more or less see what is going on here. Okay, so this is kind of working here a little bit. Okay, 
Let's go back into that. Okay, so for things in, let's go on. Target is wireframe. It's path. Let's take a look at what path looks like. So I'm gonna go into my um, weight paints. And um, so let's just look at path. Huh, so that should be totally stuck and all that. Why is that? Says it says it is. Especially right there, why isn't that isn't that because there's no vertices there to do that? Is that why? Maybe I gotta bring the bring it across some more. Yeah, capture the vertices, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I had to do some adjustments. It's all good. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing is wrong with doing adjustments, right? Adjustments here. Let's go like this. Let's make this a little bit. I think this might have to go into the into the other. Uh, yeah, to that other. That other piece. So just trying to even it out guys. Okay. This guy here wants to fall on a piece. It feels like that, you know. Yeah, I think this needs to be like this. Didn't want to have to cross over, but it should be okay. any sense over here it looks like it's it's obeying it just making sure here yeah so that leads down into there or up if you want however you want to look at it and this leads up into here surprise this this needs more it needs more cuts in the in the terrain like going into that I mean if I make a cut there let's see yeah I think that's what's happening have to make the cut guys let's see c c l uh k let's cut from here that's almost like a straight shot so let's do this Okie dokie. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Yep, thought so. So that brought everything up nice and clean there. Added some more cuts, but it's all good. Looking sharps. I think just for the sake of making sure there's no um no weird stuff. Let's go into the. Let's go 
go back into wireframe. I think I might need another cut along there. Okay. Okay. Brought that piece up there. I think this should be good to snow and good to go, guys. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, now to deal with this part here that's going into the mountain. So, what I like to do is to go to the top view. Let's go see. Let's go wireframe. I like to select these, uh, these vertices here. Matter of fact, I actually like to cut into it just to make sure I'm getting it nice and straight. So I'm looking at, at the outline of the building here and I'm doing a cut. That represents the space. Some like so. But what I need to do though is the proxy mesh. Go back into here. This mesh here. I need to make it slightly bigger than that cut. So let's go. And the wireframe. I see the cut right here. Slightly bigger. Okay, now I'll do something like that here just in case. Okie dokie. Alright, now what I gotta do is to select those vertices inside of here. So the, the outer ones are already selected. Select the inner parts. Now let's see in um, solid mode. Because you know wireframe is kind of like a mess. Let's go here, just like that. Okay, again. Okay. Okay, cut, cut, cut. Any cuts that's kind of missing, I'm just adding them in like with this. Yeah, that's fine. I'm selecting the parts of this mesh here that has the building on it. So it all looks selected. Let's go in here. Whoa. Yeah. Alright, so I'm just going to add the selection to the path. There you go. See, it cuts right in there. It actually just brings all the mesh down to that level there are better ways to do this but we'll um we're cool with what we got for now right assign that see what happens yeah that's a little bit better Oh, that's some other issue happening here. 
Leave that alone. Okay, so we could do other things. You know, we could green and we could like try to smooth out all that. But that's for later. I just want to get the stuff around this nice and flat. So, so far that, that's looking not too bad. Nobody could go behind there and it looks like the building has a space. Okay, so let's come in here now. Let's do the same thing. Okay. You want to go along here? Okay. I think this may work. Let's check it out. Um We're just making sure that we have some cuts here. Hey, I think I got my friend, um, hey, <laughs> I have Pustu here. Hey, how's it going, Pus? I have my friend Flavio here in, um, in Discord. Oh. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good. What is yeah. this project? Uh, this here is, this project here is the game that you're helping me work on, um, Soul, to, Soul 3000. Hello? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? It's Soul 3000? Yeah, this, the Soul 3000 game that you were helping me work on. Nice. Like last, I think it was like last year. <laughs> yeah. Or a year before that, or like two years ago. I can't remember how long ago, it was like a year ago or something. Yeah, this is this is the, the game. So I'm um, in Blender here. And... Um, I'm using the different tools in Blender to, to help fix the um, fix up the the level that I'm um, the first level that I have. So I'm just gonna do this and then I'm gonna show like um, what I have so far in the game because I'm actually trying to modernize the game a little bit to make it look a lot more modern and I'm trying to finish it also. So here I'm, I made um. um you know, for anybody who's joining, I made a mesh here that's kind of um, to help flatten the terrain for this building that I'm coming up to in the level. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add this to the to the part for the C group. Let's add that, assign that. I'm gonna add a shrink wrap modifier, shrink wrap. And in the shrink wrap modifier, I'm going to use project mode, and then I'm going to project along the Z axis. So that's the up and down axis in Blender. And I'm going to go negative and positive. And the target, I want to get that same flattened mesh that we made so we could flatten the mountain. Flatten, you see, all of a sudden the mountain is flattened down to make room for the building so I said oh okay you know these guys could actually build this in this little space right here rather than it goes inside of the mountain i mean buildings can go inside of mountains but um not for what i'm doing here i don't think it will look very good 
Okay, so um, the group here with my one path. Okay, so that looks a lot better. Let's make sure that this here is also on path. Yeah, yes, it is. Okay. So this temporary mesh here helped me to bring the terrain up to the foundation of the building, which is these kind of polygon things. And let's go into sh to the material mode to see what it all looks like. So I just clicked the material preview here in the Blender report and my graphics card is compiling the shaders for it. Now the Blender viewport is called Eevee and you could also use it as, as a renderer. Eevee looks really, um, really does a nice job in rendering things. But um, the end result of this game is no longer going to be in Blender, which I was using. I'm, us I'm now using the Godot game engine. You know which is a lot more robust and that's what we're going to do so you see all this stretching right here that ha that's happening because we're pulling we're pulling the, the the texture from a tiny point all the way down so it's making lines so we'll have to go in oh no actually, i'm saying we i would have to go in <laughs> and um and update the texture so that it fits with everything else or i could just leave it as is and don't care um, we'll see. <laughs> so, so if you notice, like I just have to do one more thing here and that's with, you know, the foundation that I have here for the game, cause the game is, is semi-futuristic. I would like to select all these things here and kind of just nudge them up a bit. So they're not interlapping with the ground. So let's do that real quick. So I'm going to hide the terrain for a minute and I'm going to select everybody here. And except for, except for this guy, I'm gonna select that guy and um, turn the terrain back on. I'm just gonna nudge it up just so it could not do that weird um, flickering double thing that you're seeing. So I'm gonna press G for grab and then Z. Oh, I actually want my Z not in local, I want it in global. All right, so press G again for grab and then Z and then Move it up us a little bit, like so. Just a little bit. Like that. Okay. That was a little more stable. And this side too here looks a lot more stable. Now if you're hearing sirens, because I live next to like a fire station and they're having a rescue call, so it's not an air raid or anything. <laughs> Let's go. It's not the the aliens have not landed ex exactly. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So, all right. So let's see what we got. So, I already did this one. This was the first one that I that I that I uh, put into the game itself. And um, this is the second one. This is the one I just did. And then this is the third one. The third part here. So these are little stops in the in in the level you gotta you gotta go to in order to um to get to the end where you'd fight like a last like a boss and the thing about game design is that if you do one um if you do one you could do one level and have a lot of all your game play elements in it so you can have all your enemies all your puzzles all your you could just focus on just the one level and then um apply that to all your other levels and just you know tweak it so each level is slightly different so we got to do it do that again but i got to do that again here for this building and um yeah it's not a problem this is probably like the easiest this was the most difficult right here this one that's intersecting some mountains because it's like how am i going to fix this you know but we could do a lot in um you know in the uv editor and texturing and all that so let's save. So I'm going to fire up Godot. So I, I like to take a look at um, what I'm doing in game. But we're not going to export all this like right away. That's, you know, all the moves on, on, on this stuff is, is very difficult. What's going on here? I think some of my um, 
rocks got corrupted somehow. What's happening there? Let me just double check here. So this seems fine, that seems fine. Why is this one messed up? Hmm. Let me take a look here in my UV editor. So I go into UV editing. Ooh, that's a mess. Look at this, it's like it exploded. Look at this over here. It looks like an explosion. Let's see. I may have to recapture my rocks. Why did it do that? Let's check this part here. L. You're a bitch. Sure, yeah, no problem, buddy. Oh wow, look at this, this thing, is, this thing exploded. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, <laughs> I have to replace the original rocks, which I hopefully kept. Let's, let's take a look at that real quick. So you see how these textures are messed up? It's because um, I did something stupid and, and I actually moved these rocks around and um, I shouldn't have done that, so. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna try to re-import. Actually, can I re-import these rocks? I think I can. So I'm gonna re-import the rocks and try to try to fix them. Let's do this. Let's get to it. So I'm gonna import a GLTF, which is what I used to export the rock. Um, so thousand and level. Okay, let's see. Rocks import. Okay, here we go. Oh, here's the rocks re-imported. Oh, don't they look great? Okay, I'm just gonna take out the, the two that got messed up. Uh -huh, so. Okay, go back here. I'm gonna select this guy. Oh, select that guy and this guy is two removed. And let's do P, so a selection. Go back into solid shade. That's the two that I want. I'm gonna delete the two that I don't want, that I messed up, so let's do that. Woo! Okay. Okay, so I got those. Let's go back into um, the material preview mode. And let's separate each one. Wireframe. P separate. Okay. Materials. Okie dokie. Now we can move these around in a meaningful way. Um, it's just gonna move this um, origin to geometry here. I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy. So I can move them properly. Okay, so now I have this selected. Let's move that. Okay, here you go. So I now I can. This is what I should have done at the beginning, guys. I should have done it this way, but I didn't, and I screwed things up. But now I'm fixing them. Let's go like so. Right. So that looks somewhat okay. Let's bring this guy back over here. Let's see how far we can get away with raising them up. Can I actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. Should I, I'm gonna rotate this guy, see, huh? let's see. Yeah, let's see what that does. Oh, I think this looks like a better fit. Not as interesting though. Well, I'm gonna leave it like that. Yeah, let's bring some back into here. Try this, see what that does. I don't want to cover that up. I think that's fine. Now let's go back into this guy here and let's move him where. Uh, let's move him over here to block this way. I'm just going to rotate that a little bit.
Okay. Yeah, so now uh, looking at this, I, I remember having a problem where I wanted to do something with these other than have them floating. So I have to look into that. Let's see. Okay, I think that's fine. This guy. And I'm just going to add these back to these, this, these group, this group of rocks. So I'm just going to go J. Right. J is to join, by the way. Oh, triangles are sexy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, Poos. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry I'm not looking over fast enough to see your comments. But yeah, check here. Yeah, triangles are sexy. You know, if you, you know, um, man, wait till you see me um, use polygon modeling to make a human body and a human face. You know, that is fun stuff. And I know that's what you, you deal in perception and stuff like that. And um, I love your work, you know. So yeah, guys, um, if you're looking right here, you see a guy called Poos2, check out his, um, check out his channel on Twitch, you know, check out Poos2 when he's on. He really, um, he does 2D art and, um, he's really, I think he teaches it. So he's like a pro, you know, um, I do art myself, you know, I do comic art and it's along the lines of what Poos does, you know, but, um, I like to actually go in and do things to stories and, and make create characters and that. I think that's what Poos does also. I'm not sure about the story part, but you know, he's really good, you know, so check it out. I, I was hoping that somehow we could collaborate, but I think I need to, to get the funds to do that. <laughs> so without, anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get into this. So we're gonna make, we're gonna flatten this guy out here again so that it's not submerged partly into the ground. Although that looks cool for a po post apocalyptic thing where things are overgrown and things overlap. But um, I think that's kind of a little bit lazy. I'm not gonna do that, right? So I'm just gonna flatten this guy out so we can see this. So I'm gonna add another like geom piece of geometry, another flattened temporary geometry thing. So let's get to it. So I'm gonna lay, so I'm gonna go in here and blender. And you can see my shortcuts here to the to the uh, left of the screen. I'm gonna lay a plane down, and I'm just gonna expand this guy. And that's why I like to start simple like that, just a simple plane. Okay. Maybe it should be out, be flattened like about out to here. Let's go to the top view and let's see if it's in. Um, yeah, we could actually use this to encompass. I'm gonna go into the wireframe, and th there's these triangles here again. Let's go into here, and um, now I'm watching some of my. Um, I have some some gameplay elements that's outside of the map, so I'm gonna probably get rid of those, like these two pieces right here. Yep, and I think this is my yeah. This is my plane here, so I'm gonna bring it right up to that edge there. So I think that probably make a little sense. Okie dokie. Already choky. Let's, let's, let's do this. Top view. Thing. And you know what? I don't have to be in this kind of bland mode. I could I literally be in the material preview and do all this stuff. So let's stick, let's do that for now. Maybe it'll make like sense to see it that way. But as you know, when you're developing stuff, you're not doing it for entertainment. So you could like, just see everything as a gray box and just do everything really quickly. But um, yeah, let's stay, you know, see now I'm streaming. Let's make it look pretty. Okay. I'm gonna extrude. All right, so I'm gonna do that trick where I make this into a wireframe and I bring it to the front. So in Blender here, there's a few for display properties, right? I'm gonna make this a wireframe. I'm gonna tell it to, to always be in front so it's on top of her, it's always being drawn on top of everything. And for now, I'm just gonna turn off the terrain layer so I could see the bounds of this, um, of the structure. I'm gonna turn that off, okay. I'm gonna leave the rocks on. You know, it'll be pretty cool. I think like this, let me, um make more foundation so i have these little things here, and this is part of the design of the game so i call these foundation polys let's go yeah. i'm using a special plugin that helps snap things in object mode in blender um 
Blendex sort of does it, but it's not 100%, so, you know, there's a lot of plugins, just like 3D Studio Max, there's a lot of plugins where you can use with Blender to be um, as productive as you want to, you know, in your head. Okay, so that's there. Should I do one more here? I think I'll, um, I think I'll do that. Actually, I think I'll, I think I'll not do that. I think I'll leave that place. No, you know what, Nick? Just do it. Okay, let's do. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. I want this part here to. Nada. This part here to that part. Snapped. Okay, so I just snap these parts here. Okay, so give that some sort of feel. Okie dokie. All right, so let's deal with this uh, mesh that's supposed to flatten things out. I think that looks great. I'm gonna bring this guy, grab Z, bring this guy up to, oh, this grab. Bring this guy up to here. This guy is up to there. It's encompassing the building. And I want these pieces here to be right up to the edge of this guy here. All right, I'm actually gonna grab, I'm gonna grab use. Okay, grab this guy in here. Grab Y. And this music is some of the music I created using Linux Multimedia Studio. You know, just for fun and it also helps avoid copyright issues. <laughs> and um, yeah, you could check it out in SoundCloud for free no biggie not all of it I have up there I just have some up there okay now let's deal with some points here you see yeah see my friend pussy deals with like planes of the face you know if you don't understand like um you know the human face you know there's you know there's different planes of orientation I'm gonna put it that way. And plane and depth planes of depth there are different depths on the face. You know, like where your nose to your forehead to your, like your cheeks and the tip of your lips and that kind of thing. And like your chin. You know, you could basically build a, a head up kind of slightly out of cubes. You know, a matter of fact, when you do sculpting, that's kind of how you do it, right? Uh, I think that's at least that's how I do it when I go to do. Um, you know, digital sculpting, not real sculpting. Let's get that over here like so. I think this might be looking pretty, pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna bring this guy over here. All right, so I think this is a good start. I'll just bring this guy spread out like so. Uh, what I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna cut this guy here. I'm gonna make sure that these are these are nice and, and straight. Oops, I think this is supposed to be like so. So grab Y, bring that back. Yeah, I think this guy is supposed to be out here. So, okay, yeah, this one seemed like it might be the simplest. I'm gonna turn the terrain back on. Okay, my computer's rendering. There you go. Okay, so I'm just anchoring these points on the existing points of the terrain itself. So they, yeah. I'm actually gonna try to. Um, I'm gonna create another polygon here. You could do this on the fly in Blender. Select three points, 
and you get you can press F and it makes a polygon. So I'm gonna add that there to add to the things that could flatten things out. And this part here, I'm gonna leave that alone. Let's see, grab and then exclude it. Move this along a plane. Okie dokes. So here we are. So this is somewhat okay-ish. All right, let's see what we could do, guys. I don't know, does this look flat? I don't know if it looks flat anymore. Ooh, something's happening. Okay, so that wasn't, I'm just gonna bring this back up. Okay, that's probably what I was seeing. This should all be on one on one plane. It should all be flat, right here. Um, I'm gonna scale it along the z-axis just to double check. Okay, everything seems fine. It's just the optical illusion of the terrain here is making me feel like it's not flat. Okay, let's let's get let's get this let's get this over with. Let's go. So, just saving, and I'm gonna select this piece of the terrain in the in the game and I'm gonna jump over to the game to see what we got so I select oh wow it's actually two pieces okay let's do it uh, oh okay is it already happening flatten path what does path look like on here let's go into the no, wait paints Oh, so it's already happening. Well, why isn't that? Oh, wait a minute. I gotta, I gotta apply it. So I'm gonna do another one. Okay, guys. My bad. Let's do this. I gotta apply the new, the new mesh I have. So let's go into here. So I'm gonna do li literally just duplicate this modifier here. Oh, I just applied it. Undo. Come on, duplicate. Here we go. And instead of flatten two, oh, did I, did I name this? Okay, let's call this flatten three. Okay, now I'm gonna add it to flatten three. So instead of flatten two, I'm gonna come here and type three. Boom. There goes the dynamite. All right, and I'm gonna add part of this mountain to that. So let's go to the top. Let's go into one of the wireframe mode so you can see those triangles again. And I'm gonna cut into that. Okay, so you see there, we got that happening. And I'm just gonna select, let's make sure I'm gonna select. Let's select everything under it and make sure it's inside of that, that um, path. Um, the vertex group. Okay, so that looks somewhat like it's doing something there. I'm just gonna double check these real quick. Okay, I'm gonna go back into shaded. This, this shade for now. Okay. I'm gonna go back into the vertex group right here and just assign these. So now all of a sudden, they're part of the the mesh that's being um, flattened by the temporary mesh that we made. Okay, uh, we gotta do it for the other side, for this one again. So we're gonna do the same thing. We come here, we're gonna add a shrink wrap modifier. Um, I want it to project, I project along the Z. That's the up and down axis in Blender. 
the top and bottom and go negative and positive projection and um, the vertex group I want it to be the path which is the flattened areas and I want it to um, the target I want it to be that flattened three okay here we go so you see it's happening right here it's flattening I gotta include some of this mountain in there so let's do that again let's include the mountain for the building so I'm gonna go to the top view select that and I'm gonna go into wireframes so I can see where everything intersects and um, yeah I'm gonna do, gonna do a cut right so let's see um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go um, K for the knife tool I gotta go into edit mode. Okay, let's go K for the knife tool. Let's select that. And I want to cut all the way up to here. And all the way across here. And all the way back to so. Everything inside of this we want selected, so I'm going to come over here, just drag, select. Right. And then um, everywhere that didn't get selected, we're just going to come in, let's see, let's go to the top, tippy toppies. Let's come here, let's just make sure. Okay, so that's selected. That's selected. Okay, so there's a little gap right there, right? So let's constantly deselect that. We got a little issues here, but that's fine. We can sort those out. Let's go into shaded mode. That's one regular shaded mode um, without the material preview. Now I'm going to um, break out my knife tool. knife come here I'm not gonna get crazy I'm just gonna end terminate it right there and let's just undo these these don't have to be part of all of that they have to be part of all of that okay so that's fine that's fine what's going on here there's a piece there alrighty so I think we got what we need so far I'm watching this point right here and I'm thinking that this point wants to let's select these. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna add this to that um, path um, vertex group that I have. Now let's see what happens. Yeah, so that seams up properly. That look like it's doing what it should. Okie dokie. Alright, so yeah, all this is flattened. So we're gonna do what we did before one more time here. We're gonna just raise everything up. Because see where it's intersecting, you call this um they used to call it Z fighting back in the days. <laughs> Z fighting because it looks like the polygons are fighting to be shown. Uh, it's really like poly polygon overlap, right? That's what it is. It's overlapping polygons occupying the same space and the computer doesn't know which one to render. You know, how would it know? So it's trying to render the both and you get this kind of flicker. And that means that when you see stuff like that, it means that your objects are definitely on top of each other like 100%. But we don't want that. So we're just going to raise everything up. So I'm just going to hide my terrain here. I'm going to hide these rocks for a minute. Oh. Rocks? Why are these rocks being hidden? Where are these? Okay, that's weird. Oh, whatever. So, uh, okay. So what are these? Oh, somehow these got out. Uh, let's put this back in there. Come on, these doggies get back in there. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, we're gonna select everything here. I'm gonna not select this guy. We want that guy to stay where he is. I'm gonna turn the terrain back on. And I'm going to ever so slightly just move this up. I'm going to turn the material preview on. 
you guys can see what I mean by me just kind of moving these up out of the way. Okay, so you see the material is on, everything looks submerged, right? I'm just gonna press um, a G and then Z. And this put the, just one nudge should do it. Yep, there we go. And this little overlap over here, I'm not too concerned about, but as long as everything else here is somewhat flat, that's the action. Alrighty. Okay guys, so without further ado, let's take a look at what I've done so far in the in Godot, in the Godot game engine with um, Sol 3000. Okay, so it's a cool art game engine. Let's take a look. Let's edit. Yeah, I'm aiming for this kind of realism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a promotional part of the game right there. It's that image. But um, yeah, so the, it's loading right now. Oh man, game development is um is really extensive. That's why some games are like a team of like you know 20 to 30 people takes like take like three like three four years to make a game because it's really it's a lot of work and i'm just a game development team of one guy i used to be um it used to be me and my other brother peter that helped me do the programming but um you know he has to live life and not be tied down to helping me out <laughs> So I'm trying to do the programming myself. Um, also my friend, um, I call him Flavio, but my friend um, Android Smith BR, or Agent Smith, or he's also known as Tylenol. He uh, he helped me do some some mods, some 3D models. So this is the game here, guys. This is uh, the menu. So this is how I start the game. Let's, let's just start it and see what we got. One thing that helped was, was help that is actually helping me with the, pro, the, the understanding the code um, is chat G, is chat GBT you know thank God that AI thing came out when I you know was running into some problems and I just say hey you know I'm running to and it's like oh check this check that or oh, you know let me try to see if I can rewrite it it's not 100% perfect but at, at least it, sometimes it helps you focus on um, what could be going wrong so the game is loading right now I have no audio in here as yet. There's no music. There's no um, sound effects. It's just basically me loading in the character and being able to run through the levels that I'm that I'm putting together. Now all the levels are technically done. I'm trying to upgrade them and add them. I'm trying to put them into the new game engine, the Godot game engine. And also while I'm doing it, I'm trying to upgrade it so it looks a little bit better than what's on Steam right now. All right, here we are. This is a oh, see. So have a little menu. If I press play, and I also need to make a loading screen. There's a whole ton of stuff that needs to be done. I mean, the gameplay elements need to be done. I've been working on optimizations. Okay, so this is definitely a good test with having um, you know, uh, OBS running with Twitch, and I'm also running um. I'm also running stuff on, um, and, you know, I'm also streaming elsewhere, you know, here on, um, uh, I got the name of the program. <laughs> uh, and Discord, my bad. All right, let's get back in there. All right, here we go. Yeah, so the little delays because there still needs to be a ton of optimization. But this is what the game looks like so far. Got a character, character could walk. Character could run. And this is what I need so this is what I need to be able to 
this is what I need to, to um, be able to explore the levels that I design, right? Uh, the playback is not this choppy. It's actually a lot smoother one. It's just moving this slow because I'm streaming on multiple platforms right now. Right? There's a you know there's a lot to there's a lot of coding involved in even in what you're seeing right now. And and as I go, I want to update like the character, and I want to update stuff more. And you know, I mean, like so at some point, you got to cut off and be like, you know what? I just need to to get the whole gameplay done. I got to do enemies and a bunch of stuff. So I'm not gonna focus too much on like the art right now. You know, and then there's little tweaking issues to do with the, with the character moves and stuff like that. See, even to get these doors to open is a bunch of code. When the character gets near them for the door to open up, you know, there's some code that I needed to learn. Some conditional code that says, hey, if, if, some, if, if there's an object named um, player next to you, then you open up. But in the actual game, that's not how it's going to be. It's actually going to be where there's a key. So if the object player, <laughs> video gaming, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, I'm video gaming. So where the code works, I put a code on the door that says, hey, if the object, this is how it's probably going to work in the game. If the object player, which is this guy, right? If this object player, if he has a key, then... If, and if he has a certain type of key, then you open up for him. So that's a gameplay element. So I got to code that in there. But for now, because I'm exploring these different levels, I have it where, hey, if the if the object next to you, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm telling on the code I have on the door. If the object next to you is a is player, then you open up, and that's why the doors automatically open when I go when the player goes next to them, like so. You know, and that's just for me for exploration. But of course, when once um, the gameplay elements are being put in, right? Um, yeah, once those elements are put in, you know, then you know it'll feel more like a game. So there's you know there's tons of enemies that needs to happen and stuff like that. And this is why I wanted my my friend Poos because I think I like his design style. And you know maybe maybe next time. You know, maybe next. You know, if this sells on Steam, you know, God willing, if this sells, if I get, if I get to finish it to begin with, and <laughs> take step one. And um, right now, it's it's actually on Steam, right? So you could download Soul Three Thousand in um, early access mode on Steam, and it's very basic, right? This is basically you run through the levels. It's free to check it out. But once I get the gameplay elements in here, where you could do a bunch of different things, you know. Where you could um, swing a sword, you could shoot with a gun, you know. I mean, just started doing some of the gun animations, as you can see here. Um, stuff like that, then, you know, then it'll be on. So let's run, let's run through. Let's see what, let's see what I got so far. No, I, no, the stuff you see me tweaking in Blender, I haven't added to the game as yet, right? So you see, I went through um, tweaking that stuff in Blender, flattening terrain um, and stuff like that, uh, you know, so I got to add those changes back in here, right? There's a lot of stuff going on that you don't, all right, so like one of the things that, are, that is happening here is that I don't have LODs for the trees. I just have the trees this, um, they are LOD'd, but they're LOD to nothing. So it's either, so it goes from the tree and when you move far away from the tree, it disappears. The tree gets dumped, dumped out of memory, right? When you get far enough from the tree. So what I'm doing, if you look at some of the pine trees in the distance, right? You see them fade away. And that's because there's another um, thing on the materials that says, hey, if the character is far away, start to, start to fade and disappear into nothing. And when it reaches disappear into nothing and the character moves a little bit more, then it deletes the actual object. So, you know, that, you know, that's some coding stuff that has to happen. And you need to do this for like things like three trees and grass and bushes and stuff, because they, you have to use so much of them to make the game look lush, 
enough and like the real world that um it slows a regular computer down now i have a crazy computer i have like a, a area a, um i have an alienware um r5 you know area 51 or whatever it is you know and i have like two i have like two crazy graphics cards i have the i want to have the 250 you know something like that but anyways you know they, they, they're good enough for what i'm going but i've got to like develop this game so somebody could play it on a shitty laptop right so after i do all my stuff i gotta go through and do what they call optimizations you know even the water i think needs some work but you know you do what you could for now i'm just a one one man guy i don't have people focused on just these different aspects i gotta do it all myself so okay so right here is going to have one of the buildings you saw in blender let's run or we could walk okay Yeah, so we're supposed to have another building here. And in these buildings, I'm hoping to have like little puzzle events, right? Where you could go in and you could solve like a technological puzzle or something, or you could do something in them, right? So this is a little preview. I think in the game, this is the only nature-like part of the game. I think this here on the second to last. Now, if you play, if you happen to play the game on Steam and you get through just to take a peek at the levels, but once I start adding in the, the enemies, then, you know, then, you know, you're going to have to, f I'm going to have to fight my way through the enemies to debug the game. I don't think that's how you do it, you know. So as a developer, once you start adding the enemies and all the challenges and the puzzles and stuff into the game, you got to be able to turn those off so you could run through and debug, you know. So me walking through here helps me debug the level. I'm more of an artist than a programmer, so I focus more on like the way all things look and that kind of thing, and composition. So this is a little placeholder I, I have here for that big building you saw in Blender. So once you finish, once you win, I mean, you're not going to be able to run through this level this quickly, but this is level one. You know, there's going to be a lot of more obstacles with enemies and that kind of thing. But um, yeah, once you reach your point, then this is this here is a placeholder for me to be able to jump from level to level. So as I design the levels, I could like go through level one and go to level two, three, four, five, six, seven until the game is done. So let's see. So, so as I enter here, so even that, this takes code for me to be able to jump from one level. So this is level two, right? And this is the portal going into level three, right? So right now it's just a void, right? And this is this void, this kind of void stuff sometimes is good for me to test out the, char the character without the interference of um of the level itself so let's see go to level so we're going into level three and again guys you know it's just more void right so we're in level three and that kind of thing and i put the the exit really close but in the actual level is going to have a lot more to get to the exits you know to be able to conquer the level there's going to be things you could conquer It's gonna take me to level six. Let's see. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna take me to level seven. It's always good to test these things out just to see if there's any hiccups with like the leveling script, script, you know. So you know, just to make the clouds move, you know. Take some. You know some 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 thinking you know and um this here of course goes to this is the end of the game this should be the last seven levels of of battling and and probably trying to make the character look as cool as he can while he fights right okay so yeah so this is exercise exercise nick you know this is what i'm doing you know little game development type type deals okay so i'm exiting right now Let's exit. 
Okay, let's open the, the level one here and take a look. So let me see level assets. I'll go to level uh, level one. Let's open that up. Huh. And we can start loading in the different levels. Okay, so this is what level, this is what this part, this is what level one looks like in, in its entirety. All right. So there's several things I gotta do. So I gotta load in the new terrain that I created, right, the new terrain art. And I gotta load in the buildings. I gotta fix grass, I gotta fix rocks. You know, I gotta do a lot of stuff to do the update so that the character can play through. And then I gotta add the intelligent objects, right? So this has intelligent objects inside of it, right? Um, and well, you know, yeah, the doors have are intelligent and stuff like that. So let's see. So first of all, let's take it, I'm gonna take it down a notch. I'm just gonna load in the terrain art. So good thing about things like Godot and Blender and different game engines, they allow you to only see what you want. So right for now, I could turn off the vegetation, but let's do that. And that should speed things up a smidgen. Or probably not. <laughs> let's turn the rocks off. Let's turn the collisions off. Right. I got a lot of things. You know, I should put the occluders here. These are I should put those in like a node. I'm actually going to do that. So I'm going to create a node here. We call it, um, yes, put a little node there. A spatial node. Don't have to be a spatial node, but I think spatial nodes just work better. I'm going to call this occluders. Now what occluders are. Those are intelligent objects in a video game that says, hey, if I'm inside of a room, if though, if something is behind the occluder, then don't render it. And that helps with performance. That helps you like the game not to render everything in the scene at once. Oh, my bad. I'm supposed to actually name the spatial node occluder. Occlusion. Okay, I'll put the occluders in here. And the occlusion. Okay. Hide those. What's this? What's that mesh? Oh, okay, that's my portal. That's my portal mesh. And then I have a spawn node. Okay, yeah, let's deal with these. Uh, let's deal with the terrain. So let's see what the terrain looks like over here. I think I just allowed the stretching to happen. I didn't bother to fix it because I don't think the stretching was that visible in this one. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't know. I might have to. You know, I might have to do something here. So let's go back into Blender. I'm just gonna save this for now. I normally don't like the stuff turned off like this, but because I'm streaming, I'm trying to save the stream so it's not bogged down by all this graphics work. Okay, here we are. Okay, so I'm gonna just turn the shades off. The textures let's go into here actually I need and kind of need it on I want to see how stretched so this part here is not that bad it's kind of like a little bit hidden um, let's go ahead and flatten I could flatten this and not leave it live you know but that might be a mistake for some people like hey bro don't flatten that but oh you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it Flatten here. Oh wow, these so these four pieces need to be re-exported. So what I'm gonna do is four pieces here. I'm gonna go control C. I mean Alt C. It's flatten for me. Just double check to make sure all these are flattened. So these are the four pieces that need to be re-exported. I'm gonna take a look at this. I think I should be able. 
with not too much problems. Just re retarget these with, with a new, um, with better. Um, yeah, let's um, let's fix this a bit. I think anything I do is gonna be better than it than it looks stretching. Whoa, it's not extruded. <laughs> Okay, so all the parts here that are modified, which is this part here, I'm gonna see if I could fix that. So I'm gonna go into my UV editing. Okay, this is a piece of rock texture right here. So I'm gonna just bring all these together as a piece of rock. So let's see, let's go to U. Go unwrap them to just that part there, which works. Scale. Now this is what I'm dealing with here, guys. So, right here. So I'm gonna use maybe like a part up in here. It's gonna make it a little tiny, it's fine. Maybe this blob right here. Maybe I could split it up also. So let's go here. Select that guy. Oops. Like so. Okay, let's add him to a, a nice little blob. I'm just overlapping these. And it's okay, you know. At this stage in the game, you could do stuff like this. When you're doing production work, in the end, it's like whatever it takes for you to get that good result, you gotta do it. But then when you gotta do some rework, okay, then you could be like, okay, you know. Let me do it the proper way. If you was to do like a HD update or something. Okay. All right, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Yeah, so it looks like a cut, but it's not as bad. It don't look like all stretched out like it did. So that's fine. It's not perfect. You know, um, normally I would like go to town on this, right? I would be like, oh my gosh, I gotta like get every iota. Uh, for now, I think that's fine. All right, let's export this, guys. Um, go back here into the layout. Come back. Export this, export this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. Save. Oh yeah, I should also check, the, because I flattened here, I should also check, make sure the rocks are properly embedded in the ground. There's a lot of stuff that's gotta like be reworked, but let's, you know, let's take it a step at a time. Okay, please. <laughs> um, let's see, export, where, where is it? Ex oh, you know what has to be re retargeted on here? The, um, I gotta redo the collision mesh. Okay, we'll deal with that after. The collision mesh has gotta be, um, flattened onto this. Okay, so one thing at a time. I am going to export this. Export as a GLTF. Um, a level one. Terrain GLW. Did I re-export the terrain? Maybe I did all of the terrain at once. So let's go ahead and let's do this. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so Let's go ahead and fix this guy here. Let's fix these. Oop. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten that. So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna flatten these. Everything that's... So these are the three pieces that are gonna be exported here. Let's go ahead and flatten that. Let's see. Okay. Let's deal with this guy here. Mm. 
And Linda has this neat paint select you could use, which is kind of cool. This, don't want that. Let's try for that. I mean, some of these, um, the way all some of these are, you could go in and you could like subdivide this and you could um, soften out the edges and do all that sort of stuff. Um, right now, I'm just trying to do this as quickly as I can. I'm a one man show. But if this is what my job was and this is all I had to do. Basically if I was getting paid on Steam or just paid in general and doing this, I would like put or like sit down and like you know get it down to the down to the polygon. Okay, okay, you dokely. Let's see. Let's make sure we got all what we need. You got all what you need, baby. Okie dokes. Okay, so now let's uh let's check the UV editing. Go back into UV editing. All right, and I wanna select this. All right, so this is what we got, guys. So let's unwrap. Let's unwrap this stuff. Let's go to you. Unwrap. It is fine. Let's grab. Let's grab it out of here. Let's see what we got here. So I know for a fact this is a ground, this is a rocks. This is like a rock face. I'm gonna use this part right here to map all that. Even this part here. So let's see. So this is the ground part, and this is the top. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna select this guy here. Like so scale you. Rotate. Grab them over here. Gotta rotate this guy a little bit here. Scale him a little bit. Alrighty. Oh, let's check the other part here. Let's do the same thing. I actually have the original meshes where I could do a reproject texture on here and just have everything just flow nicely. But um, for now, you know, it's, I mean, that's a whole lot of work and it, it doesn't make for a good stream, I guess, you know. And um, you know, for now, I'm just trying to keep, you know, things moving on screen and just keep a little action happening. And i um, trying my best to explain. Let's do something like that. Squeeze that. Let's sque squeezy him down. Scoochy him down. Scale. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. Okay, not perfect, but not bad either. Oh, look at that. Almost invisible. I have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do this one guy here. <coughs> Excuse me. For the Lord is good. Blessings and honor, glory and power be unto the enchanted. From every nation, 
All of creation bow before me. Heaven and earth shall declare his glory. Hmm. Okay. Alright, let's do this guy here. Okay, so let's unwrap this guy here. Oops. Zoops. Okay. Well, let's do that same thing again. Let's, uh. Oh. Let's rotate it. TD rotate a lot and uh, let's grab this guy here. Scooch him right there. Scale him down. Am I even in the right? Oh, yeah, this is something different. Hold on. Let's see. Oh, so maybe I want this guy over here, the bottom piece. Grab that. Bring the cursor over there. Now I'm rotating on the on this um what do you call it, the 3D cursor here in Blender. I just set it to that instead of the um, objects um, instead of the objects own or um, origin. Okay, let's take a look now. Let's see what we got. Not too bad. Not good either but better than what it was. So for now, I'm gonna roll with that for now. Let's see if we could just fix that. That's a little bit better. Let's see how that is. Okay, maybe it needs to, to do something like that and um, something like this. Maybe a little bit more of a scale to it here. Well, let's see. Okay, it's getting somewhere. You know it's gone it's gotten far enough. Okay, I think I gotta skip that. And that and that. Let's go. Okay. So that's not too bad. Alright, let's start to export these guys. Let's get let's get to it. Just Okay. So we're exporting I'm gonna export the entire terrain mesh, right? So before I think I was just doing the pieces because I was afraid and I'm no longer afraid. We're just jumping in here. <laughs> hey, uh, how's it going, Scoops? Hey, welcome to the Exercise Next Show where, you know, we do a lot of art and, you know, some music, some gaming. You know, whatever tickles your fancy or my fancy that is. <laughs> All right. And I'm also streaming on um, Discord. So we have the Discord thing going. And, oh, you know, before we move on, I, I, I see some stretching over here. We almost for, I almost forgot this part here. So let's just do this part and then we could export it into the game engine. Oh, you're just doing Blender stuff. Okay, yeah, fine. I mean, you can see some of my um, shortcuts here on the, the left of your screen. And um, if you, anyone out there, you know, you or, you know, Poos2 or whoever else is watching, wants to know more about Blender, you could ask me. You know, I know a good bit of stuff about Blender. Um, I don't, I'm not too into geometry nodes as yet, but um, I'm going to get there. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions or any suggestions, hey, it's all good. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's let's I'm gonna move, try to move as quickly as I can. So I'm just selecting out the parts here that I want to, um, you know, to fix up in the UVs so they don't look so stretched, right? They don't have to look, per you know, I mean, they're not looking perfect by like my standards, but even when I, after I do them in the UV editor, um, 
this still this still doesn't look good because I'm just sliding it around rather than reprojecting like a new texture on there from the high res model that I have. Oh yeah, so I have a high res model in here that has that has procedural rock texture on it. But um Oh okay. So oh, you say you have no idea what you're doing, you're just sort of sending it. Alright, here's a question. How do I select the entire mesh so like an entire cube because trying to select an entire cylinder trying to select an entire cylindrical cylinder oh cylinder cylinder is a is a pain. Okay, let me see if I get you right. Alright, here's a question. How do I select an entire mesh so like an entire cube? Because trying to select an a cylinder is a pain. Uh, so like how do you how do I make an entire cube orange? Uh that's kinda easy. So Alright, so uh, yeah, I can show you right here real quick. Okay guys, we're gonna we're gonna pause a little bit here on this game stuff here and I'm just gonna answer a question here in chat. So how do you select an entire uh, entire object, right? In Blender. Okay. So you have two modes in Blender. I don't know if you know that. So you have the object mode, which is what you start in Blender with. And then you have your um, your component mode, which is um, faces, um, points, and edges, right? So you have your, the points are called vertices and the edges and the, the lines are called edges. So I'll show you, I'm gonna make a cube. Are you trying to, um, I'm gonna do a cylinder actually, because you said cylinder, right? So I have a cylinder, so I go, um, if you look at my thing here, you could see the buttons I'm pressing. So go mash, I'm gonna make a cylinder. So here's a cylinder in Blender, just default cylinder, right? Nothing fancy, right? So the way you select it in Blender is by using these tools up here. So if you're on the move tool, you could select stuff in Blender now, like that. So you could click on it. So I'm in object mode right now. But if you want to select the component, the components, you, have, you press tab on your keyboard and then tab allows you to select each component, right? Now, if you want to select the entire object in component mode, you press A, right? If you press the A key, you could select the entire thing. That, but you're in component mode, right? So that means if you move, if you move it by pressing G, you leave that little tiny dot over here, right? It's gonna be off, it's not gonna be in the middle of your object anymore. And that could create problems unless you know what you're doing, right? So now, if I was to move the, so if I was to go back out into object mode by pressing tab again, to get back into the object mode, notice that if I go to my move tool right here, right, and I move it, it's moving it based upon where this tiny orange dot is. So it's no longer in the middle of the, the cube. Am I answering your question or am I giving you too much detail? <laughs> so that's how you do it. So if, if you want to select the whole thing, if you want to select the object, okay, the A shortcut was what I needed. Okay, yeah, so that's in component mode, right? So if you're pressing tab, you press A, and if you want to, to not select it anymore, you could either click outside or you could press A twice, right? So let me just try it. A once is to select it. A twice is to not select it. A once select, A twice not select. Like double tapping A. Cool, all right, yeah. Hey, happy to help. You see, so there's a lot of that in here. There's a lot of things to, as a matter of fact, I think Blender's selection is way better. So right now, Blender selection, the on the fly selection, on the fly, is better than 3D Studio Max or even Maya to a, de to a degree, right? Blender is built for speed. So once you start using the shortcuts and stuff, like you move really quickly. Okay, so let's retarget this. Let's, let's get this popping. And let's get this into the game engine so we can run around and take a look, right? So I'm gonna go back into my UV editing panel. Oops, I'm in shading, so I'm gonna click UV, UV editing right here. 
Okie dokie. And um, let's just zoom into here. So I'm going to unwrap this by pressing U, unwrap. And I want to see my texture. I'm just going to remap this to a region where this texture is. I think I'm actually going to map it to this region right here. I'm just going to scale in. Oops. I'm going to scale it. Let's go here. Scale again. Let's grab this guy, put him over here. Is this the largest swath of rocks that I have? I think so. Contiguous without any holes in it. Scale that. Let's scale that again. Okie dokie. Put that right there. Okay, let's take a look. So yeah, look at that. It looks like somebody came in and chopped in part of the rock and you can see like the inner part of the exposed rock. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm not gonna spend a million trying to like match up the seam parts right here. So it's, oh no, not not right now, maybe later. Okay, so let's export, let's export this. So luckily I have everything here in, so in Blender they made this, con this what you see, let's go, let's go into this mode, okay. So what you see here to my right is the, in Blender what they call the outliner. So the outliner shows a tree, a tree view of what you have in your scene. And you could make these little things called, um, called collections. These little, these little folder container things here and you could put objects in them. So I have, so inside of my export, um, so I made an export container and I'm putting all the objects I need to export to my um, to my game engine in there, right? So uh, to the game engine, which is it's not my game engine, the game engine, which is uh, we're using Godot game engine. So I'm going to select everything under terrain level one terrain low here, low, low quality. Let's go here and select, um, select the objects. Right, so I got all the objects selected. So the way I did that is to go over the collection where I have all the, the terrain objects in here. And I right click on it and I, did, I do select objects and select all the objects inside a container. Okay. So we're gonna export this bad boy. Let's go. I'm just gonna make sure and save. All right. So it's so far as looking good. Let's replace. So let's go file. And remember, we I still have the game here in Godot. The thing is, is that I think um, I'm gonna open up the. I'm gonna open up the area that has this terrain. Let's take a look. Oh, it's actually right here. So, okay. So in Godot, you could have files inside of the outliner in Godot. So that's how that game engine works. So anyways, let's continue. File, export, uh, GLTF, which is the interchange format that we, that we use. Uh, let's go here real quick. And let's go terrain, right? And I gotta fix the terrain collision after. Cause that's the, the collision is a is a invisible mesh where the character is you what what the character uses to stand on, and to collide into. You don't actually, you know, um, you can have them collide into the art object itself, but because there's so much polygons on it, it um the computer has to do a lot of calculations. So you can make a collision mesh that's a lot simpler, and that's what I did. So, um, I'm gonna go go. To, I'm gonna use a preset I have here, which selects all the stuff. Okay, so I'm exporting that. So we all the changes we made is being exported. All right, and we're just gonna take it a step at a time. And this is what I learned. Sometimes when I move too fast and I try to get like a bazillion things happening in here, I run into a lot of errors. So if I do it a step at a time, so I do the terrain is one thing, the collision mesh, the buildings is another, you know, all the on and the, the trees and whatever else. 
it's a lot better. I could catch mistakes. So let's deal with the terrain. So we just exported the terrain. So I'm gonna hide Blender here. Actually, I like to save as I go. Saving is just such a habit with me these days. Okay, dokie. Hey. Okay, so it's now Godot is trying to re-import. Godot is trying to re-import the assets I just saved out. So we're just gonna wait here until it finished do the reimporting. And what I'm going to use, because I already have the building in here, instead of exporting the buildings from Blender, which is basically that building in a modular way, I'm going to use that building to build what I have in Blender. I already have stuff in it. Okay. Right, so you wouldn't see a change here as yet because actually it's turned the fog off. I have a, a like a volume fog happening, which helps with the game. So let's turn that off. If I go into my lighting, my world environment, and I turn fog off, okay, that's much better. Not as hazy, right, guys? Yeah, let's run. I hate seeing these arrows. Come on, get out of here. Okay. All right. Okie dokie, here we are, back again, coming back around again. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to open up the uh, my terrain um, node here, and I'm going to add all the new terrain into here. Alright, so let's go and open the terrain. So the terrain is in my level 1 folder. Right, we already have all the materials we need. The materials are fine. You don't need to 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 do those. All right, but what we do need is that terrain um, GLTF. Okay, here it is. Let's take a look. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, this is it with all the changes that we did. It's kind of dark in here because this is just like a floating file. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of all. Let's just get rid of what we don't, or what we need to replace. Let's keep it simple as we can. So for sure, um, yeah, this part here, then that part there. And I think this part here. Just delete that yep delete and let's get those back here this part here this part here and this part here and I'm just gonna do um like a little copy I'll come here in the terrain and let's do a paste boom oh yeah look at that it brought the changes in this is great Okay, let's do some more. Okay, we got this part here. I think some of this part. I think some of this part oh, got flattened, maybe. Maybe some of that part. 
I'm going to copy and we're going to get rid of those parts in here and just update them. Okay, delete that. I'm just going to paste. Yep. This was with all the updates. Yeah, okay, this is already updated, so no need to to go beyond with what we already have. Let's just stick with this for now. Okay, so what else are we gonna do? We're gonna fix that collision mesh. So I'm just gonna turn off this terrain here for now. Just give us a chance. Right now, saving the scene, updating it. Oh, this is going to be so cool. We can start adding in all the different um, pieces and stuff. This is going to be great. I'm just going to close this file out. Okay, so we got all the pieces we need in here. Let's go back into Blender and let's deal with that, um, that collision mesh. So uh, I think I have the collision mesh. Let's hide this temp. So um, let's hide this temp file. The collision is right here. So this is what the collision mesh looks like. It's just a boundary for the, for the game itself. For now, I'm going to hide... Um, Let's see what the collision mesh looks like over here. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so I realize that my collision mesh has got to include this platform after this thing. So I'm going to hide the buildings for now. Right. Oop, this part's supposed to go along with the building. So let's select it. Excuse me. So let's go here and let's go to the M key and then um, export and then I want it into wall buildings, right? Okie dokie, so I'm gonna, my terrain has got to conform. How are we going to do that? Well, a good way of doing this would be to make a proxy mesh, make another mesh of my terrain that I already have right now and let's reproject it to, to fit back down nice and flat and plumb on here let's see um, I'm thinking I think I may not want to do that I think I may want to do it piece by piece or I may want to do it okay so let's do it that way so I'm gonna select this mesh here which is the terrain Actually, no, let's select the terrain again and let's make a new select select the objects, right? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna duplicate it. And all that, and let's just merge. Let's just put this out somewhere. Let's put this out in the main collection area. I'm just gonna merge it together. It's just one thing. I'm gonna delete all the materials on it and all the junk. So we do that right so there's nothing on here and I just want to hide my terrain okay so we just have this can this be something other than white like so okie dokie we want to have the building 
um, collision attached to that. I may wanna, I may wanna work on that. So you know what? Let's select this. So L, and L. Let's separate that. We don't want that together. Okay, so there's some work here that has to happen. Okay, so let's get this going. Game development is for the brave. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do this. So I'm gonna use a um, shrink wrap modifier to stick to reproject the collision mesh back onto the new geometry, so the character is nice and straight on here. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So here, go into here. And we're gonna choose a shrink wrap modifier. Wow, shrink wrap modifiers really come in handy, yeah. So we got that, and um, yeah, we want on surface. You know what? I'm gonna go with the project method again. You know, no, let's just select the target and just see what happens. Oops, everything is nice and straight on surface. Okay. So I'm going to go. To, I'm going to just go through here and just check to make sure everything is where it should be. So if you notice, you see this bottom part here. So I'm going to use some um, some nodes, some vertex groups to get that part there. So something like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna make uh, this to a vertex. Oh, yeah, let's just see. oh ground. Oh, ooh, let's go back. Go back. Ah, let's do it again. Ground. I'm gonna assign that to that. Alrighty. Oops, I didn't have this part here. Let's do this part. Sign that drive. Oh, and this part here too. Sign a guy to ground. Uh, let's select ground and see what we got. Yep, all these guys here. All right. So I'm gonna apply another shrink wrap on here. So I want to just shout out my friend, um, you know, Tyler Noel, Android Smith. I want to shout out, you know, Poos2, of course. And I want to shout out Scoops448. Or 448, before we say name. Or 448, yeah. So. How are you guys doing? Okay, so near surface. Let's select the target here again. And I only want ground to be affected. There you go. So everything is should be nice and tight. Nice and tight. Okay, so we got some some tweakings. So I'm gonna do some tweaking on this. Oh, so I want some of that. I'll select these two here, so I want this one, this one. Right, and we're going to vertex mode. Right, so there's some tweaking I, I wanted to do, and I could do it now. So, so grab. Uh, oh, yeah, there's a mix of stick with, a stick with vertices. And um, let's go into tweak mode. Okay. 
You're just doing a little tweaking here, guys. See, grab and no Z, and I want to line that up with that. I'm pressing G, right, and Shift Z, and then holding Control for tap, and it just kind of locks it on the plane in the proper axis there. Some of that, some of that. I don't want to delete this guy. We're going into the delete these faces. Yep, going into that. Let's see if we could do that with this here. Just we just want to keep some level of consistency happening here. Just going through guys and just doing like little tweaks here and there. Hey, at the risk of sounding like a DJ, just want to shout out everybody who's been following me. You got any questions, anything like that? Any suggestions? I'm open. down to this guy here whoa a little too close come on buddy you can do it Try this one here too. Okay, so I'm just going to go through now, guys, and I'm just looking at um, different parts here that probably needed tweaking in my um, yeah, stuff needed some tweaking. So the character's not floating and stuff, you know. Oops. Let's go here. Oh boy.
Okay, so that's a little bit better there. Yeah, so I'm just going through making sure this collision mesh is as tight as I could um as I could make it. Okay, so I noticed I had to subdivide the ground here for things to work out for the collision mesh. Let's see if we could snap up, um, snap this up. Might have to do this here, but we'll we'll cross that bridge once we once we reach it. Okay, save. So I'm gonna bring in this, um, bring in this building here, these buildings here, and see if I can add some collision for the buildings. Okay, so I collision for the buildings here, not collision for the ground here, based on the ground. Put L. I should grab that. That's cool. Let's see. F again. Yeah. So let's separate this collision from the ground itself. Hmm. Let's take a look some things that needs to be fixed like this Z or oh, is this because this is being crushed down that's why being crushed down by this so with that said we could um, remove this from that Yep, so that's back better. That's back gooder. Let's take a look. Yep. Okay, saving. Okay, so these are the collisions for the for that area. So let's check out. Yeah, let's check this out. So let's unhide the wall buildings. Okay, so this, these are different kind of collision, which I have for the ground at least, using this, just like that. And that's supposed to be the underside of this stuff here. This should be a collision, so I'm gonna go M, uh, export, Collision mesh. I'm gonna extrude easy. Mm, I just want vertex, vert, vertex snapping. Let's grab that. There you go. My vertices snap, snappage. I'm gonna select the bottom here. I'm just gonna control and flip. It's just colliding like that. Let's take a look. Let's go invert. Let's go in again. Flip. Okay.
Wow, isn't this? Come on. I'm just gonna do this. Whatever. Let's flip that. Okay. Close it. Okay, that's the collision for that. Let's just change this to that um you know to that wire. Keep it keep it wired. Okay. Match a bit too. I'm gonna hide a collision mesh and I'm thinking that this polygon configuration Hmm. If we want that on the bottom. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good point. So, I'll select that again. A lot of renaming things. Let's go back here again. I'm gonna extract that out again, guys. And um, he's gonna be like a texture. I'm gonna apply a texture on that guy. Let's go with um. Going to shading. And the texture I'm going to apply to this guy is the um, key texture. I'm going to go you, unwrap. Well, not key card actually. Tech mat. Here we go. I'll make a part two to this. I'm going to expand the scale of this. So one to one to one, like so. I think that's good enough. Ooh, this is a whole thing. I don't want it to be a whole thing. Eh, what can I do? Hey, yeah, because that's just the underside of something. It looks kind of cool, like a. CPU wafer, uh, like a circuit board wafer, sorry, exactly, that's probably where the texture is from, so let me see, can I jack a, a texture from somebody, yep, foundation poly, okay, UV, unwrap yeah I'm just gonna jack a texture I'm not gonna like make something up new for that at least not for right now jack a material
Yep, that's cool for now. Because I don't want to rebuild anything and just add to the budget of the whole thing. Okay, so we got that. And he definitely has to go into the building textures. Uh, export wall buildings. Okay, uh, All right. So I think this is fine for this part here. I gotta do this part. Let's hide the terrain for now. Oh, you know what? I should collapse this. Let's collapse. Alright, let's get rid of this guy. This guy just literally was a temp. Let's hide the terrain. Let's unhide the terrain. It's a little things like this I gotta fix and stuff. Okay, let's go. Let's see. Terrain low. Okay, let's get this foundation stuff happening. Several ways to do this. I'll show you guys one way. I'm um, gonna literally just select all these, which probably is the faster way anyway. And select the outer edges, and then you can make a shape out of that. That's what I'm gonna do. Select all the outer ones, go into edge mode, and select all the edge shapes. Okay, so we got all the outside edges there, so I'm gonna do Shift D, like so. I'm gonna OK. Separate selections. Let's go see what we got here. All right, so we got this section here. So those are the outer edges. I'm just gonna merge these together, Control J. That's all you need, all right? And then I'm going to um, merge all the points. And I'm gonna press F for face. It makes a this is a new thing, and then E. This is going to. Like so, yep. It has to, so I just want to invert the whole thing. Flip the, oh, and flip normals. There you go. So that's a, this is a whole um, collision for this part here. Probably don't need on the side, not for this one. There you go. Wire. Okay, let's get out of all that. 
There we go. We got some collision happening there. Uh, I'm gonna move this over to collision. Movie stool with collision. Actually, hold on, this is not. But on the side. For this foundation. Yeah, so that's the collision there. Um. Okay. We have one more to do, which is this guy here. See this? I'll show you another way to do to do something like this. So let's just select one, then detach like an edge. If there's a new object. Let's go into vertex mode. Select that one vertically and then press E. Take shoot and then control to snap. Or you can just turn snap on and just press E. Or you can right click. There's a lot of optimization that could be done to this, but I think this is cool for now. And I say optimization in terms of my foundation could be a, more, a lot more... Um... Oh, there seems to be like two in there. Okay. That's interesting. So, yeah. Select everything and press F. Alright, let's take care of this guy. Why is there two, two of these guys in here? Oh, no. Oh, it's just overlapping with this guy. That's what's happening. Yeah, optimization like the interior edges like this the interior faces you get rid of a lot of that stuff that's fine Let's see what that looks like so we gotta um, invert this let's extrude this down See what it looks like again. See, still in vertical again. It's like all Alt N flip normals. And I don't want the bottom part here, so let's go that. Okay. All right, so that's a new collision. 
Let's make sure it's that one we have selected. Yup. Turn off the snap. I'm gonna send this into the collision um, collection mesh mesh collection. Viewers wire, and then we're gonna send that to collision mesh. Okay. Alrighty. Let us see what we get. So, in theory, in theory, we have the collision, we have the wall burn. If we turn off the wall burnings, we get all the collisions that goes along with that. Yes, we do. Let's export this collision mesh. Actually, we'll have to re export it tons of time so let's just leave this like this and let's um Oops, I think I made a, a mistake here. Let me fix this. Yeah, it's a mistake that's happening right here. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Gotta fix this real quick, guys. Alrighty, yeah, I made a little bit of a mistake here, so I'm trying to fix it. Oh, uh, let's see here. In the internal collision, uh, let's go here into um, the buildings, export wall buildings. Okay. Yeah, I need to make the ground here works. There we go. So we're getting it. Getting it good. Inside the building. And let's connect these back up. Okay. All 
Alrighty, so we got uh, let's put the, the wall buildings on. Yeah, the, to this collision mesh, I'm gonna have to move this collision mesh over to. I'm gonna have to make a copy of it. Move it into here. Turn the wall buildings on again. There we go. All right, so this is almost a perfect replica of that. Okay. So here I'm gonna use this new snap this vertex point here to that. And um, select here, move vertice, pressure to selected. All right, now I'm going to rotate along the the three D cursor, which is at position, which is at the right position. Let's see the rotation of this object so far. Global. Okay, so the rotation is obviously like that. So I just want to keep track of that. But to see, minus ten maybe. Okay, best thing is to go to top view, wireframe. Let's just look at this. Of course, this part here needs, is the only part that needs to be fixed. So that's straight vertex. Okay, we're gonna have to test all this out at some point. Let's just look, make sure that's all my collisions. Yep. So I'm just attaching collisions to these new buildings. Selected top view, Let's rotate that in place. as snug as possible. I think that works for there.
take a look at this one off thing here. He does have an inside. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going really quick and um, just trying to get this collision somewhat, somewhat matched up. Okay, so now let's hide the, the buildings again. All right, so now I'm gonna select all the terrain, all the collision meshes that belong to the ground and put them together. Oops. There we go. Just gonna merge all these. So this is like ground. And all these is for the wall. Okay, so I'm going to export this now. Sporting collision is fun. Kind of. <laughs> it's fun when you finish with it. You sound kind of soft. I wonder if it's me. Let me, ch let me check my, um, my volume. Oh yeah, it's, it's me. Hold on. Oh, 
Oh yeah, so you took care of you took care of business then. <laughs> So he goes to so what what um what school does he go to if you don't mind me asking? What school? Yeah. Oh, it's uh how can I say it in English? It's for. It's for. It's like a primary school or a kindergarten? It's kindergarten, like what we call kindergarten. Yeah, it's it's like a kindergarten. Yeah. Okay. He had five. Mm -hmm. So it's like a. Oh, he's five years old. Five years old, yes. Ah. Okay. Okay. okay let's see here. So yeah, time to export this collision mesh. Export. <laughs> um, let's see. Export GTF and the collision. Selected. Export. Right. So now that I have these exported, I can build everything in the game engine I'm thinking from here. anything because there's no materials on it and it doesn't need a material so what I need to do is to take this thing here I think the whole thing copy and I need to paste it in here paste it in the level itself not in the collision as yet let's go ahead and paste yep because that happens because it's flipped and that's something to do with um delete that again. Let's try it one more time. Let's copy this back. Um, let's go into Okay, there it is. Right side. 
Do I need to generate, actually take this mesh and generate it from such one that looks invisible? Actually build this out or whatever it is so I need to make how many extra buildings one two three extra buildings so, I'm gonna, so this here belongs to this node here let's go into it this is this node this is a separate scene like so so what I'm gonna do with this actually this here should technically be in the middle of in the middle of this point right here so that we can move things around properly. So, hold on to your, hold on to your hats. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try to move that over there. Let's see, transform, okay. This, is, this gets tricky. Oh, there's an animation player to this. Let's get rid of that. So you see all that right here? We're gonna move that in the middle over there. And then we gotta reposition everything back yet again. Okay, let's, let's do it. Ooh, you're gonna see um, the results in the, in the engine there. We're gonna have to reposition it in the engine. Whoa! So save this, All right? I'm gonna have to duplicate that. So we're gonna use the, the game assets to kind of construct this the right ways. Okay, so check this out, right? So now we come back into the, the level, it's gonna be all messed up. I'm gonna have to reposition it in the level. There you go. So you see on the level is on zero, zero. We got the collision mesh as a guide for what it's supposed to be, like where it's supposed to be. Oops, go back to the top mode. This has got to be spot on. I don't recommend doing this at home, kids. <laughs> don't try this at home.
I'm looking at um, these little points right here. Zoom in into it. it Look like everything might be fine. Let's go check it out. That look like that might be okay. That looks like that might be okay. I think it might be all okay, guys. Okay, that's correcting a, a problem there for so we can make other buildings. Okay, so here we go with the other buildings. So that building is L wall building, right? That should really be L wall building one. But it's fine, I'm not gonna change it. So it's this file right here. So if I duplicate this file, we're gonna have two. Is it duplicate? Yep. I'm gonna call it uh, two. Underscore two. All right, so there's two right here. And now we can bring two into here and see it's at zero, zero, which is good. That's what we want. I'm gonna put it over there where let's put the top view and put it over where we want. But we gotta we gotta configure this building to be special. <laughs> okay, okay. So this is a good start. This guy over here. And like the last one. We gotta come in. I'm just gonna make sure the collisions are tight. So tight as you can get them. Actually, this is a this is not really a good way to do it. Technically, you want the collision to be with the building itself, you know, so that you know you're not doing what I'm doing here. Just not again. But maybe for the next level, we'll do it like that. Yeah, you want all the collisions to reside with like the individual buildings and objects themselves. Cause you'll run into weird issues like I don't know, like what I'm doing right now. And you see this doesn't have the tools that Blender have where I could like really make sure it snap snug into place. Let's check over on this side. See, and I think it needs to rotate just a smidge in this way. Because the fine rotations is what gets things really, really odd. And now we gotta, I gotta translate it. Okay, so and then now I gotta 
do the configuration for the, the platform part. And the rocks gotta redo and everything like that, that's fine. So now... Yeah, it's a rock collision. So, yeah. so I could open the balloon too up. Said, like the collision can literally like reside with the you know with the building itself it's all good let me see uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna bring a copy of this guy in here I just wanna see a guy
think I'm making this harder than it needs to be. <laughs> uh, uh, this is part. This is part of it, guys. This is this is what this is what happens. I think I need to export each building by itself. I think it may be better. You could modularly use the building technique. Eh, let's modularly build it and see what's up. And after that, I'll call that. I'll take a break. Out. No, I'm just gonna fold it. Let's go. I could technically build a collision mesh within here, but let's not do that. Like it, it, it works. It's different than what I envisioned it being. But let's just see. Maybe I add one more piece here. Yeah. I feel like somebody's revving, revving up a car in here or something. Oh, you know what? It's, some, it's a, somebody with a chainsaw. Cutting off a fell tree branch. And, uh, um, and the, the backyard of the apartment.
Oh, wait a minute. I actually need a part in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe export the found all the foundations of this into here. Yeah, maybe that's what I do. Okay, so let's do that. Export them in place. Yeah, you know what? Let's, before we let's just take a look and see what this the results is. Come up with. We don't need this. Oops, yeah, I gotta rotate this. there. All 
Alrighty. Let's see what's, what we got. Hmm. Interesting. This bulldog set is bulldog different. Yeah, that was my bad, you know? I mean, yeah, that was my bad. Anyways, fix that later. Yeah, I could like, like re export this boundary here and, and fix, export these meshes and get it fixed. Let's see if we could do that. Okay, yeah, so yeah, some work in there. I can make a different uh, collision ritual also just for that. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Okay, so let's see. Oh, yeah, let's make another one for there for that building here real quick. Oh yeah, and the good thing about this, I can make this short, so I'm gonna do that. I think I just have to knock off one of these points. Yep, don't want you. Take you and then scooch you up to here and plumb you away. Okay. Seven. There we go. I believe that one is going down there. This is why, you know, like it's good just to, to really kind of get one level somewhat fine-tuned. We can work out all the little kinks and bugs and modes of working that you discover as you do it.
about to get it. Let's see axis on. You know why axis on this?
take this guy here. Okay, we almost we're almost there guys, we're almost done. At least for today. Gotta take a break. Gotta get up and walk around, stretch my back, go get something to eat, probably play a game. Deck this one out. Gotta deck the holes on this one. At least to the front. 
This one might be on top. Oh, this music has been playing kind of bl it's been blasting guys i'm sorry about that <laughs> hey what's, what's up Alrighty, let's take a look, see that. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> let's see. We had some rocks to replace so that kind of thing so let's let's just do that real quick I kind of feel like I don't wanna <laughs> I don't want to replace these rocks there have some rocks that don't make any sense okay let's see what we got so if I open the rock file there's no rock file the rocks are all in here they have a LOD script on them oh each rock section all right I remember this there's these rocks I want but at least it's on the LOD and it's just like okay I see what's going on let's, let's go into blender let's let's finish this off so we can run through the game not perfect but we'll get there it will be much easier if I just export each individual thing but I didn't want to waste the resources Okay, 
so let's see. The artisan should be an export, so let's turn everything else off. Export. These are the new rocks. These are the new rocks. But these actually belong to this batch here. But I think I have them in batches. Why is that lit up differently? Oh, there's two, so let's get rid of this one. Yep. Now I'm just gonna take a peek at the texture just to make sure everything is fine. Yep, everything is fine. Let's check the, check everything else out just to make sure there's no no wackiness going on. Okay, let's re-export this. Export, select it as GLB, rocks. Okay, so that's exported. I'm just gonna try to update. I'm just gonna replace that one rock group right there. I'm just gonna select, select that guy. And um, I'm gonna go ahead, just copy the name. Okay, let's check out the rock files. Open anyway. And the ones we're looking for is, I don't know which ones we're looking for. Is it that group? Is it this group? I think it may be this group. Actually, I think that's it. That's it. No, that's not the group. Oh, wait a minute, there's an S. Oh, it's the group right here. There you go. So let's, uh, let's export, let's copy this guy. Copy. Go back to level one. Let's see if we can paste them in. Nope, that didn't work. Let's, let's paste it in here. Okay, so what I gotta do is I gotta rotate this. Okay, so let's get scared of that. Let's get rid of this.
so I'll go up there. Coffee. Hey, hey, buddy. There we go. Okay, let's get rid of that collision. Let's generate a new one. Okay, it seems like we updated the rocks. So let's check out, we could run through the game now and see what's up. So I'm gonna turn everything on, all the assets on. And we'll see how this how this works out. Save. It might be a little bit messed up because I have some of the collision things to work on, but hey, I think this is gonna work. Okay, so I, first of all, let's turn the veget vegetation on and the collision. Alright, I got some things to do with the collision. So the collision ground, I want things in one, the wall, I want one or two, one or two, one or two, one and two, one and two, okay. Look wrong, I only want one, okay. Moment of truth, guys. Let's check it out. We did some updates. He added new stuff in there I'm just gonna close my file here real quick okie doke so we was in blender and we were in blender and we were able to um, update the level for this game that i'm working on called soul 3000 you can get it on steam for free check it out it's in early access um and we just did some let's turn the occlusions on oh yeah so i need to do occlusion for the for the um, actual buildings that's another thing that's another cool thing i gotta do it definitely helps with um performance issues and all that so let's see what we got for occlusion. Let's do that first before we move on. This occlusion here, that occlusion there. That I believe this occlusion could go for other things. Let's, let's try. Let's try to fix. Let's try to do this. 
These are some of like what I you know, kind of like intelligent object kind of things that you know. Let's just do that. Let's nest. Let's nest this. I'm gonna select, copy this, duplicate. I'm gonna bring this guy over here. I'm just going to go down and take a, a quick peek to see how this is doing. Just need to rotate this a little bit. Yeah. Just will take this as a smidgen again. Let's just bring this all this up a bit. I can move this along. All right, so we have some occluders happening. Let's apply this to the other parts here. Let's duplicate that. Go down and check it out. Let's adjust this. Let's 
put you this across there a little bit. Okay, and then one more occluder and then we can play it, then we can check the game out. What these do is like once you're inside of a building it it takes away the rendering of of the exterior of the um the burden of rendering the exterior off of your um, graphics card and um, CPU and all that sort of stuff. So I'm gonna add this in. If I don't add it in, um, it's not gonna allow the game to run as um, efficient as as it as it possibly can. Well, I gotta check these excluder for this. These are the bigger ones, okay, I got you. Duplicate. of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness, and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. There went out unto him all the land of Judea, and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel skin, and with a girdle of skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than I after, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open, the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son. Whom I am well. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. He was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Okay, here we go. So that's that's that. It's taken care of. Okay. And saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. Let's take a look and see what this looks like once we play it. Okay, let's check it out.
son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. Straightway he called them, and they left Save that, and let's jump right into it. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> let's go. Hopefully everything is still okay. Play. Okay. Somewhat smoothish. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, we know this part was good to begin with. Let's just double check this room to make sure all the collisions are good in this room. Okay. Okay, let's go check the other buildings. And so far, um, the collision meshes are, are okay. You know, for the, for the level. Oh, that was a major slowdown. I have to look at all those sort of stuff, all those sort of things. And that butt chainsaw is annoying. I'm sure you guys can hear it. Okay, ah, here we go, the moment of truth. Okay, so there's some work that needs to be done with that building. Hey, see, look. There's some work that needs to be done. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Wow. Thou canst make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. You know what I could have done? I could have exported the other thing and match the yeah, match the thing based on that. Ooh, fall down. Okay, that needs to work on. It's not perfect, guys. I'm not going to enter through the back here. Oh, that needs to work on. There's some trees. Some stuff. What is it crashing into? It was noise that he was in the house. Way, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room okay no not so much as about the door yeah, it looks like a poop you know it's like overgrown and they come unto him bringing one which was born of all the grass has got to be reprojected onto the ground unto him for the price they uncovered the roof where he was when they had broken it up okay so yeah this is some of the stuff that I gotta gotta work on said unto the sick of the palsy son thy sins be forgiven Let's check this guy out over here. Same thing with here. Grass has got to be... Why is it it's running into a wall? What's, what wall is that? Weird. Got to check that out. Yeah, all these things got to be checked out. The overgrown... Um, look, it's kind of cool, but we gotta work on that stuff. Okay, and that there is the um, the portal to go into the level. But let's just check this one out. This one seems somewhat okay. Now once you go inside of here, you should see nothing. Whoa. Colliding into something. Whoa. Okay. Or maybe that's, you know what that is? That's that wall. That's what that is. The, the end of the level wall. Okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> so there's, a, there's a ton, guys. There's a ton to be worked on. Okay. But, you know, we got the main players in here. That's what, that's what's 
You know, that's what this is they about. To them. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees. Yep, so, yeah, there's some work. Alright, guys, this is Exercinic. I'm gonna call that a stream. Thanks for joining me. You know, let's um continue to be creative. You know, whatever creative creativity means to you, whether it be drawing or doing um some work in Blender or sculpting, anything like that. You know, I gotta probably get back into um, actually doing some drawing and some art and that kind of thing. And um, I got a pencil. I got a, a, a kind of like a pen. It's like a no ink pen, but it's, it actually looks like a pencil. But mine's could erase, so I might try to use that to get back into doing some penciling and that kind of thing. So, if it's anything, guys, take it easy. Success I make out. Thanks for checking me out, and you guys enjoy the rest of your day.